We've heard this story far too many times, millionaire athletes losing everything. How in the world is it possible for someone to throw away all that money? With several athletes in this predicament, it seems more like an epidemic than a trend. In this video, we'll talk about 11 pro athletes who ended up in the poorhouse. Let's get started. First off, at number 11, we have Mike Tyson. In 1986, at only 20 years old, Mike Tyson became the youngest boxer to win the WBC, IBF, and WBA titles. He had a long career as a professional boxer, he fought in more than 100 matches, held the heavyweight title more than once, and made more than $400 million. Yet Tyson declared bankruptcy before retiring in 2003. According to the New York Times, it was said that Tyson spent his money with the same aggressiveness that used to mark his early round knockouts on things like jewelry, limousines, and Siberian tigers. Tyson claimed that shady promoters were partly responsible for his situation. In 1998, he sued his former promoter, Don King for $100 million, saying that King had cheated him out of tens of millions of dollars over the 1990s. At number 10, we have Darren McCarty. Did you know that, in general, NHL stars don't make as much as the stars of other professional sports? But we still assume that McCarty, who won the Stanley Cup four times and made more than $15 million as a dominating player on the ice during his 15th season career, would have been happy in retirement. Instead, McCarty is said to have used drugs and gambled too much. In 2006, before the end of his NHL career, he filed for bankruptcy. Later, the IRS said that he hadn't paid his taxes either. McCarty was on two hardcore pawn episodes on True TV in 2012, less than Three years after his retirement, he was working at the pawn shop, shown on the show. At number 9, we have Allen Iverson. During his best years, he was known as the answer, but when he had money problems, the small former Philadelphia 76er couldn't find any. Iverson is said to have made more than $250 million throughout his career, most of which came from contracts with the Philadelphia 76ers and lucrative endorsement deals. Iverson was once the NBA's MVP and one of the highest paid basketball players in the world. World. During the 2008-2009 season, he made just under $21 million while playing for the Detroit Pistons. But when his wife, Tawant, filed for divorce in 2010 after eight years, a different picture of their finances came to light. Iverson was reportedly broke, in debt, spending a lot more than he made each month. He bought new clothes when he traveled so he wouldn't have to carry his luggage. Talk about overspending. Then, in 2013, he gave up his NBA career for good. But AI might be saved by the fact that his funders thought ahead. A report from 2012 says that he has $32 million in the bank that he can't touch all at once until he's 55 years old. It's said that it pays him $1 million a year right now. At number 8, we have Vince Young. As a former star quarterback for the Tennessee Titans, Vince Young should have, and could have had, an easy life. Seven years after joining an NFL team, Young went to court to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Young's former financial advisor, Ronnie Peoples, said that the athlete spent more money than he made. He signed a $26 million rookie contract with the Titans, making him one of the highest paid rookies. But he spent his money carelessly. He would buy expensive things like a $176,000 Ferrari, but he had no way to pay for them. Now, we wouldn't buy a bag of chips if we couldn't afford it, much less a Ferrari. In their bankruptcy petition, he and his wife said they had assets worth between $500,000 and $1 million, but their debts were between $1 million and $10 million million. dollars. He hasn't been with the National Football League since 2011. Next up at number 7, we have Dennis Rodman. Most people remember him for his time with the Chicago Bulls, but he also had short stints with other NBA teams. He's remembered as one of the most flashy NBA players. Today, however, he's also remembered as an NBA player who went bankrupt. He claimed he was sick, broke, and couldn't pay child or spousal support. Rodman owed back child support of over $800,000 and back spousal support of close to fifty. $50,000. Even though he didn't make as much as some of the other NBA players on our list, Rodman was very rich thanks to his NBA contracts and the many other things he did, such as TV show endorsements and movies. At number 6, we have Diego Maradona. Diego Maradona, an Argentinian football player, is considered one of the best soccer players of all time. He won one of FIFA's two Player of the 20th Century Awards in 2000. As a result, he had a pretty impressive salary. He set the world record for how much a soccer team has paid to transfer twice, and he's now making nearly $3 million per year as a coach for the Dubai-based team Al Wassel. Unfortunately, Maradona has not been as good at managing his finances. The Italian government says he owes $50 million in unpaid taxes from when
when he played for Napoli from 1984 to 1991. So far, all Maradona has done is give up some expensive jewelry. This is a sign that he may not be the best person to replace Sepp Blatter, who resigned from his position as president of FIFA after a s At number 5, we have Antoine Walker. The former NBA All-Star ended up in Idaho playing in the NBA D-League a few years ago, living from paycheck to paycheck and praying for a chance to play in the NBA again. This may be the saddest story of all. Walker's money problems read like a how-to-lose money book. Walker's end shouldn't have been a surprise given his expensive sports cars, bad business deals, and perhaps worst of all, the 70 or so people he helped at one time. Moving on to number 4, we have Lenny Dykstra. After playing for the Mets and Phillies from 1985 to 1996, Lenny Dykstra seemed to be doing well financially. In 2008, Dykstra said that he was worth $58 million. The year before, he bought a mansion in Thousand Oaks, California for $18.5 million. He even had his website with ideas for investing, a magazine for athletes with high-end lifestyles, and a column on thestreet.com with financial advice. But in 2009, Dykstra lost his house to foreclosure and filed for bankruptcy. He said that he was a victim of mortgage fraud and had less than $50,000 in assets and $10 million to $50 million in debts. In 2012, he was sentenced to six months and five weeks in prison for bankruptcy fraud, hiding assets, and laundering money. At number three, we have Cheryl Swoops. During her professional career in the WNBA, Cheryl Swoops is thought to have made $50 million. Swoops was one of the most famous faces used to promote the WNBA, but her huge earnings did not last her the rest of her life. She says that she had bad lawyers and made bad investments. She has also said that she was partly to blame for her money loss. Swoops had to sell her Olympic medals and Naismith trophy to pay off her debts, including a $250,000 IRS debt. At number two, we have Dorothy Hamill. Dorothy Hamill was one of the most well-known athletes in the U.S. for many years after she won a gold medal in figure skating at the 1976 Winter Olympics in Innsbruck, Austria. In 1993, the sports marketing group of Dallas polled and found that she was more popular than Michael Jordan. When she signed a $1 million a year contract to skate for the Ice Capades, a franchise she would later come to co-own, her financial future seemed to be set. Even so, America's favorite figure skater had to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 1996. She blamed her ex-husband for their reckless spending. Hamilt continued to tour and perform on TV. In 2007, she wrote a book about her life called A Skating Life, My Story, which became a New York Times bestseller. Finally, at number one, we have Michael Vick. Michael Vick made more than $100 million in his career as a quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons, Philadelphia Eagles, and New York Jets. This is pretty amazing, considering that he spent almost two years of his best playing years in prison on charges related to a dogfighting ring. In 2008, Vic was in jail when he filed for bankruptcy and persuaded his creditors to change how he owed them money. Vic is said to have paid back almost all of the $18 million he owed at the time by living on a $300,000 budget since he got out of prison. Well, that's all for today's video. Do you think these athletes deserve better? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content in the future. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.